a very interesting discourse between the two world leaders there. Uh, what I find interesting is that Macron, if, if we run the choreography here, Macron has almost put himself into the, I, I suppose, the outlier position, which is where Trump was in the run-up to, to this meeting. The, the language has changed. True. I mean, we've moved from Trump being the most vocal critic of NATO, questioning the very existence of the organization and the U.S. role in it, to defending it while Macron, while Macron moving to the other position. But you have to take Macron's comments also in context. Okay. He was referring to issues such as, for example, Turkey, which is, you know, the second has the second biggest NATO army and is refusing to join forces on, on other European matters unless the alliance, for example, uh, 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 labels the Kurdish militants uh, uh, terrorist organizations. Basically, you're asking NATO to move into domestic affairs of uh, of Turkish uh, of Turkish Turkish politics and that's where the French uh, president objects and says that this needs to be settled we need to agree on the fundamentals before we you know move, do anything else Ella, it's good to see you, as always. Uh, what I find interesting is the about face from Trump on this particular issue. This is, of course, uh, you know, a U.S. president who had once questioned whether or not the U.S. should be part of NATO. What is all this back and forth, all these 180-degree uh, turns actually mean for the efficacy of NATO as a political alliance? Morning, Tracy. To be honest, it's, it's very hard to be surprised now when, when President Trump changes positions because tomorrow he might as well, you know, renew some of his criticism against NATO again. But, but you know, if we were try to rationalize this, you could think possibly, and it's been, it's been speculated since, since yesterday as people tried to make sense of it, that this is a president who's, you know, it's, it could be his approach to, you know, foreign policy uh, gearing up to the 2020 elections in the U.S. or part of it, at least part of it also supporting Boris Johnson, his friend who is, you know, about to uh, enter U UK elections. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's difficult to see beyond uh, crediting himself for the increase in spending. It's really difficult to see an overarching theme or a change, a big strategic change uh, in, in U.S. thinking, um, in, in my view. Images there of global leaders arriving at Buckingham Palace last night uh, for a reception. Um, Mr. Erdogan was one of the people getting out of the cars there, w rocking into the palace. Um, how contentious will Turkey's relationship be at this meeting? I mean, they've gone forward with their S-400 despite much protestation. Yes, it, and it will be contentious, it will be controversial, and, but that's, this has been the characterization of Turkey's relationship uh, with uh, the West, if you, if you want to put it that way, uh, since in the past few years, whether from the refugee crisis threatening to open the floodgates uh, to, to the rest of Europe unless they get more money or unless they strike a deal that would allow Turkish citizens visa-free access to the Schengen area, to the S-400, to the, to, the US, to the U.S. pastor, bringing the Turkish currency market to the brink of collapse. And we've seen, we've seen, yeah. we've seen him go back and forth on these things, and this is the latest, and this, it is now a feature of Turkish foreign policy, uh, and it will be definitely uh, contentious. Maybe now that Trump seems to, you know, sup be supporting the NATO and Turkey, which then Erdogan would see an, would see uh, uh, support from the U.S. president in these talks, and that would allow him uh, to to get away with it.